you don't want to start missing church lately. I tell you, church is going to get very different. You're not going to know church the way God is going to bring the church to a place where miracles will take place on a daily basis. You want to taste the goodness of God on a daily basis. And miracles is what God wants to bring home into every heart on a daily basis. And it can only happen because you are open for His encounters. The encounters of God, the encounters of the Holy Spirit in one place changes your whole life. Because I can tell you right now, when I tasted the first day that God was good in hopelessness and in a, a, a very depressed season of my life, many years back, I never, ever went back to the old. I couldn't get enough. We couldn't be without worship in the car. We couldn't be without worship in the house. The worship was exuberant. It was loud. Uh, my kids said, Mom, can't you listen to worship softly? It, I couldn't go soft again. It had to be loud and it had to be real. <laughs> there was a place in our home where the frames of the windows were vibrating. So you can imagine how, how vivid and how loud the worship was. The plumber came to fix our plumbing, and boy, oh boy, he was outside, but we were inside, but I turned it even louder, so that wherever he was busy working on the land, unblocking a drain, he would never leave that property the same. Um, you have to get loud, and you have to be convinced that this is who you're going to serve. Our Father God is not a silent God. He is a loud God. He is so loud that every morning when he makes his announcement, when we open our eyes, we know that the presence of God is around us. The birds sing loud every morning. They announce that they were ordered by the Lord to bring sweetness of the Lord around you. The bees show up when the sun come up. You walk in your garden or anywhere and you can see the announcement of the birds and the, the bees that are singing, going from flower to flower, nectar to nectar. The announcement of God's presence is everywhere where we go. And the same happens, I see, with the hardy dogs. They fly from tree to tree. We have probably about eight that live in our surroundings, and I see that they're multiplying. They even fly in the middle of the night and make announcements of their, their, their loud sounds that they make. They make their loud sounds even in the middle of the night. So the presence of God, He created all things, and He made everything pleasant for every one of us to endure and to experience on a daily basis. And when we live in an atmosphere where we are caught up, and we are ensnared and interlocked and entangled in fear and worry and anxiety and whatever it might be, you miss experiencing the presence of God. You can get so caught up that you are not strengthened for the battles that you, you fight on a regular basis. So get back to basics. Get back to God. Experience His fullness. Be focused on Him. And I promise you, you will, you will uh, have Miracle after miracle, glory after glory, that will be known in the atmosphere where you walk and you travel. That's what God wants to do, is breathe His breath in you. And let the breath of God touch lives around you. So this morning, I want to talk to you about something very precious that I believe that God wants to bring our focus back to. And it's all about witnesses and doing mighty works. You know, if you have not witnessed the goodness of God, how can you speak of the goodness of God? If you've not tasted and got into the rivers of living water, how can you make anybody drink of that that is real? 
But the big thing is, is to highly value what God has opened up to you. Don't set it aside and let the cares and the busyness and whatever become so real to you that you're forgetting about what you need to get through life. It's only with the help of the Holy Spirit that we will be successful. It is only with the interventions of our mighty God that we will be people that are different. People that have, they serve a mighty God. You will be pointed out if you serve a mighty God. Even the unsaved will come to you for help and say, I hear that when you pray, things happen. Pray for me, please. I'm open for prayer today. And you know, they inspect you. People that you work with are looking at you. They're looking at your track record. They're looking at your personality. If you say you're a child of God, is there love seen in you, tolerance, compassion, and gentleness? Is the fruit of the Spirit the experience of the woman or the man of God? And that is our greatest testimony that's our great, greatest witness out there. And so this morning, as the Lord speaks to us, He's going to take us through the Word and, and jot it down and go and meditate on it again and see if it is real in your life. The very first part I want to look at, and I'm looking at the Amplified Bible, the Classic Edition. The classic edition is very, very precious. Acts 1 verse 8, but you shall. Did you see might, might not, could, could not? No, you don't see any of the wording there. It says, but you shall receive power. Now, what is power that the Lord is speaking about? The ability, the efficiency, and the might. This might is the endurance to continue to do the will of the Father when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now ask yourself the question, have you allowed the Holy Spirit to come upon you to place and to pour into your life His ability, His efficiency, and His might, His power when power is needed? And that's, we can allow it or we can hold it back. Unbelief can hold it back. Reasonings can stop it from working. Thinking you are not qualified could stop it from working. Because if you open your heart to the power, to the Holy Spirit, there will be evidence showing up daily. It says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you cannot help yourself. But all you want to do is witness of the power of God. Witness of the love of God. Witness of His gentleness, His loving kindness, His compassion. And that you are accepted in the body of Christ. So you'll become witnesses in Jerusalem. That's even the place, your co-workers in the body of Christ and in Judea and Samaria and listen to the following, to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. So there will be no stop at this power you received. If you receive it, you can't help yourself but to respond with it because it gives you your ability because it says ability efficiency, and might. So are you baptized with the Holy Spirit? Did you allow His ability to work through you this week? Are you allowing His efficiency to work through you? And do the people experience the power that is on you? With other words, that light that never turns dark. It shines off you. It confirms who you belong to. And remember, it is to be a witness. You receive this power to become efficient and have the ability to witness anywhere where you go. And the Lord showed me the church has stopped witnessing. Body of Christ in general all over the world have allowed for their lights to become dim. 
Some of them are so comfortable that they'd rather sit at home and watch the service than make the effort, bring a sacrifice to the Lord this morning and go to the house of the Lord. Because when you go to the house of the Lord, you receive a new infilling. That infilling is not always on the recording. Laying on on hands and, and stirring up the gifts in you is not in the recording. So face to face, hands laid on you gets you to a place where you can drink rivers of living water. The whole worship is not always on the recording that is sent out. So how will you build an altar before the Father in a recording if you're not present where the corporate anointing is? So this is how the world has become. Let's just look. What kind of message do we want on social media today? Let's, oh, no, I don't like what he's saying. No, let me go there. Oh, no, I don't like that. No, I don't like that. And so we've become, we've become pick, choose, and not rooted, and not grounded in the living word of God. We just swap. Like you would change your outfit on a daily basis. We're doing the same so there's no honorable, rooted, grounded. Put your, your hand to the plow and follow Jesus with his instruction anymore. And that's really what is happening across the world with believers right now. So in verse 9, it says, also from the Amplified Classic Edition, it says, and when he had said this, even as they were looking at him, Try and imagine this experience. Jesus is saying this. And as he is saying to them that they shall receive, when they are baptized with the Holy Spirit, they will receive his power, his might, his ability. He's talking to them. Even as they were looking at him, he was caught up and a cloud received and carried him away out of their sight. So the question I want to ask today, have you received the instruction? That was his last instruction that he gave Jesus before he left the face of the earth. Are you living with his instruction? Are you practicing the instruction? So this was his last instruction and he left. And so in Luke 3 verse 16, I want to look at another angle of this. And the other angle of this that is so precious is John answered in Luke 3 verse 16 and 17. He answered saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water. Have you been baptized with water? You see, when you're on social media, there's no one on the TV screen that will baptize you. No one is going to baptize you while you're watching TV. You need interaction. And you can be baptized as many times as you like. It's between you and God, your relationship. And the baptism will be arranged. I just put your names on the list with Pastor Dean and Pastor Jeanette and Pastor Candido and uh, all the pastors. But indeed baptize you. I indeed baptize you with water. John was doing that. But one martyr, and the, and the word to hold on to, he's martyr than I is coming. Whose sandal straps are not worthy to loose. So not even to loosen his sandal strips. John, this is John speaking. John, who leaped in his mother's womb in Elizabeth, when Jesus came in Mary's womb, entered the room. He's talking about this Jesus, whose sandal straps I'm not worthy to loose. Why? Because he was the seed, the son sent from Father God to come and help us and make us streetwise, to show us there is a way. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth. He's the door. So there's no other way to please God the Father than to come through this door, to enter through this door. 
he says, I'm not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with a Holy Spirit and fire. And, and this statement is very important. With a Holy Spirit and the fire. I want to ask the question, church, where is the fire? Where is the fire in the believers today? Where is the passion? Where is the move of the Spirit when you mention the name of the Lord, the name that is above every name? Do you know that COVID was only a name? But do you know that Jesus is a name above every name? With other words, he's Lord and he's Savior of all of us that call upon his name. And we have this power and this fire to exercise absolute an assault against something that is not of the Lord. And when we do that, we have holy angels commissioned to come alongside of us, warring angels to commission the will of God. Where is the fire? Are you still right there? If you take it from, uh, 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 if we take it from levels to levels, from level one to ten. So when you got born again, you shot up to ten, level ten. You were so excited about Jesus. You didn't want to be without him. You wanted to learn. I was so hectic. When I got born again, I harassed the pastor that whole week. I got born again on the Sunday. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I was phoning after him. I wanted to be baptized immediately. I didn't want to wait a week. And praise God, my whole family, we all, we got baptized uh, two weeks after we got born again. And we never looked back. We signed into Bible school. We became immediately committed. And that's the key. If you're not going to become immediately committed to something, you're not going to develop the fire that is needed to carry you through every season of life. So he's, in verse 17, he's when oving, oving, fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into the barn. But listen to this. But the shafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. So what does the fire bring? Cleansing. Why is the body of Christ not walking in a higher level of righteousness if they did receive the Holy Spirit? Because if you did... And if you are entering into a session with him daily, there should be more a higher level of righteousness growing in us. I look at many that we've taught, many we've brought from baby steps to there, and where are they today? Where is their fire? Where is their, their faithfulness? And that's how you know how much ground Satan has in their lives. Because of complacency, if you've only got one morning to come and build an altar, Monday, you cannot build it in the household of faith. You've got to go to work. Tuesday, you've got to be at work. So you don't have that opportunity of going to the house of the Lord to build an altar of worship. And you know, that building altar is a sacrifice. So if you cannot bring your sacrifice to the Lord once a week and he never takes off, he's with you every day of your life. So he never ever puts anything else import, more important than you any day of the week. But he only asks, will you not neglect the gathering of the saints? Come and build an altar before the Lord on his instruction. And he says, he will burn with unquenchable fire the, the shafe out of our lives. So we'll get cleansed. We will walk in a higher level of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Has God been speaking to you about your vocabulary lately? Has he been speaking to you about the things you say lately? Has he told you that stops right now? 
this prophecy over your life stops right now. The better prophecy is you have all things in Christ Jesus. You are sufficient in everything that you touch, everything you do. The love of God causes all things to work together, to fit in the master plan. You are not displaced. You are called. You are set apart. You're anointed for such a time as this. The fire, the Holy Spirit, the living water, you are drinking daily from the rivers of living water. And verse 16 says of Luke, listen what it says there from the Amplified. I want to look at that one where it says, John answered them all by saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming the strap of whose sandals I'm not fit to unfasten. And you know, when you listen to unfasten, with other words, I'm not taking over from him. He will have his purpose. And the purpose he is going to be on the earth is he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I believe that the world is looking for this fire in us. They are looking to see, is this fire real? But when a small thing happens, the whole world falls apart. Where is the fire? Where is this might? Where is this authority? And that's what the world is looking for. You say you baptize, but Satan shows up and he says, Ah, oh, so you have a flat tire. So why is the world come undone with your flat tire? Oh, so your, your, your gears are packed up. But why are you so depressed right now? You say you have the fire. You have a little cold right now, but you said God does miracles. So where's your fire you talk about? But yet you look like you're going to a funeral service. So what are they seeing in us? Do they see the fire real in us? Luke 3 verse 17 says, He went over his shovel fork, he says, is in his hand to thoroughly clear and cleanse his threshing floor and to gather the wheat. And you know, wheat is always mentioned by the Lord. And he says, and store it in his uh, granary. But the chaff, he will burn with fire that cannot be es extinguished. And so we can see that God's talking to us about um, Developing and being in the light. But the light has to have, must be visible. If the light is not visible, you don't want to be known by the happy clappers, but they look like they are sorrowful. You don't want to be known by anybody like that. Um, or all they do is judge and have an evil eye on someone, judging all their movements. You see, none of us were called as inspectors of everybody around us. We're not called to inspect them. Is that right? So if we're religious, we will walk around like think with, we can inspect everybody. That's not the reason why we're on the face of the earth. He says, you are the light of the world. So that means we're not to tolerate darkness. Matthew 5 verse 14 and 16 says, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. That means you cannot put it away. Because when the light on a hilltop is displayed, it is visible to everyone. And this visibility is very important. Be there, stay there, and God's might and his ability and his effectiveness will always win in every situation through you. So if we're not in the light, we're actually giving up his ability, his effectiveness, and his power. So we give up too much. It's too much to say no to because we need all the help in this world. Is that not true? Amen? So Matthew 5 verse 16 says, in the same way, this is from the New Living Translation. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see. That means let it be a lifestyle. You're not doing it for people's acknowledgement. But let it be a lifestyle so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. 
Because if you are like Jesus, and you've given the old personality away, and you've allowed the fire of the Holy Spirit to take away the shafe in your life, the things that you don't even like. We've got habits that we don't even like, is that right? We've got things we've tolerated in our lives that we're not even satisfied with. So let's allow the fire access to go into those areas because we can also be and say, Lord, not now. Um, I, I'm not ready to deal with this one yet. But let the Lord have access to even the habits you're not happy about. Bad habits we're not happy about. Amen? And he says, let your good deeds shine out for all to see the lifestyle you live that they will give praise to your heavenly Father, not you. Amen? And if you think about the shining and for all to see has a purpose. And the purpose God wants is so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Your heavenly Father. Have you ever had people come to you and say, please will you pray for me? I heard from others. If you pray for them, God heals them. Your connection must be secure. You must know it's not you. It is him who touches their lives. That's why you give the living water. You give the living water so that they know where to find it. And you introduce them to the living God. So that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. How will he achieve or we achieve this result God wants on the face of the earth? There's, there's a way to go. John 7 verse 37 says, The promise of the Holy Spirit on the last day, that great day of the feast. So they were in corporate get-together, right? There was a get-together. There was a feast happening Jesus stood up and he cried and he made something known to them saying, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. So where are we going to get our thirst quenched? Only through the written word of God, by coming to Jesus. The dryness in our lives, the, the negativity, the complaining, the feeling sorry for ourselves, all of that dryness, the anxiety, the bordering between fear and, and belief, that, that sort of dull places in between. It cannot be our portion any longer. We've got to start drinking from the rivers of living water. John 7 verse 38 says, He who believes, so that is crucial, believing, trusting, having faith in him. As the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Note that if you watch a good movie, it satisfies your soul, but it does nothing for your spirit, man. But now think about this. Where will the rivers of living water come from? From the heart. That's the soul, man. It's got to get into the soul. So if it's not going to be sown into our soul and meditated and spoken out loud for it to sow into our whole being, it's never going to flow as rivers of living water. It's a good thing to read the word out loud. If you read it out loud, you're hearing it, you're sowing it. If you're declaring it, you're sowing it in another way in the atmosphere of where you walk. And soon the fire will come upon it and produce something very precious. So in verse 39, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given to them when he was speaking about it. But Jesus was not yet glorified, right? He was not. But remember, baptism they practiced baptism while he walked on the face of the earth. Right? Amen? Because he was baptized by John the Baptist. 
And he says, permitted to be so. But repentance was the order of the day. Did you note that we're not all that good to repent? We don't really like that word too much. Because it means we've got to lay down something. And it could be that holy cow. Right? The thing, the feel good thing that we need to let go of. Maybe it is chill out time. <laughs> but resting in the spirit is far better. Some people say, I listen to them. And they said, oh, no, when I get home, I need to watch my soapies. And I think, what a waste of time is that? Because now your, your soul, the soulish area, is programmed with that's how they treat people. And they, they hang on the lips of those words. And before they know it, they start thinking they're those people. So you can see, what is it sowing into your life? So we hear that the Lord wants something better. In uh, John 7 verse 40, he says, Therefore many from the crowd, because remember he was loud when he said, you've got to receive the Holy Spirit. When they heard the saying, said, truly, this is the prophet. Others got another perception. They said, this is the Christ. So which group of people had already drunk from the rivers of living water? The ones that actually saw this is the Christ. Confirmation of the Spirit was in their being. The others put the function that he, the declaration he made, put a title on it and made him a prophet. But he was the Christ. He was the one that would walk in this. 1 Peter 1.24 and verse 25, as the scripture says, people are like grass, popping up everywhere, right? Some of us are green. Some of us look dull. Some of us are black tired. You know, there's different kind of grass that you get, right? Some can handle the frost and the real cold and the intensity of the heat. We've seen that grass can even sometimes not handle the heat of the summer sun. And they go yellowy, is it not? So all of us are exposed to the different seasons in our lives. The heat, the cold, the loneliness, the whatever. But one thing to never do, don't isolate yourself. Never isolate yourself. If you become isolated, discouragement will grow. And when discouragement grows, the temperature of your heart will change. And your success will not be like it should be when you are around people that are speaking into your life. And do you allow people to speak into your life? And do you recognize this is the Christ or do you see only the prophet? The one that sees. Because you don't hear and you don't see because of the cares of the world. So family of God, this is a very important point here. He says, but the word of the Lord remains forever. He says, and that the word is the good news that was preached to you. So what are we doing with the good news that is preached to us? It's up to us what we're going to do with it. Are we going to grow it? Are we going to make it of effect or are we going to make it of no effect? Are we going to lose it? The seeds won't take root in our heart or are we open for the living water? Are we yearning for more is a good question. Jesus says to us today, our hearts are spiritually thirsty. It is really spiritually thirsty, our hearts. And sometimes we don't recognize it. When we become more negative, we most definitely need more drink. Drinking from the rivers of living water. When we see that the world is just impossible and the cares of the world are just so great, we need to drink. Because it means that we're not drinking enough. Because now we're seeing that they are more numerous than we are 
and we are outnumbered in our situation. Evil is overtaking the world, but so is the righteousness of God is increasing in the hearts where he's welcome. So people aren't around us are driven by anxiety. Who have you know them? They're in the workplaces. They're everywhere where you are. The masks have been removed, but the anxiety never left their eyes. You're standing in the, at the tools when you're buying your groceries, and you can still see the fear and the loss in people's eyes. I was thinking about our countenance. What is our countenance looking like when we're out there? Are we more concerned about what people think about us? Or are we still intentionally looking for more of Christ? Are we walking with strength? Or are we walking intimidated? So people are not enjoying contentment or peace anymore. They don't even recognize it's missing. Because the cares of the world are so great that they can't see the protection anymore. So think about focus. We spoke about in the beginning, focus. What are we focusing on is what we're feeding on, on a daily basis. People around us are frantically pursuing something. Some are pursuing more wealth. Some are pursuing more, more goods. Some are pursuing more property. Some are pursuing more favors or whatever it might be. But what are we pursuing is it still the only thing that matters more than anything else? His responsibility comes with weight. And boy, oh boy, buy your first property or get yourself your first home that you move into. No matter what you look like, there's always going to be maintenance. Your place where you stay is always going to need to be maintained. And does it take some elbow grease? Amen. It takes elbow grease, doesn't it? And as soon as you think it's just right, then suddenly you see, oh, window frames need to be painted now. Oh, the fence needs painting. Oh, this needs doing. Or that needs doing. So we can see pursuing something. Don't let that become the everything. Pursue his righteousness. The kingdom of God is what we should be pursuing more. As number one. If it's not top on our list, the rest is not going to be easy. Because he says, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And then all things are added to you. So if the order is wrong, there can be no fire. The rivers of living waters will be affected in our lives. So here are lessons that we want to look at from the Israels, Israel's idolatry. Think about they were in captivity and all they wanted to be is out of Egypt, right? And a lot of us want to be out of Egypt. But coming out of Egypt is costly. Is that not right? So let's have a look at it. In 1 Corinthians 10, 1, I don't want you to forget your dear brothers and your sisters about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. Wilderness experiences there will always be. All of them were guarded by a cloud. Does this talk to you about a faithful God? Guarded by a cloud that moved ahead of them. Isn't he an amazing God? That he could go in a desert and he can move ahead of them. And they walked under this beautiful protection of the cloud. And of all them walked through the sea on dry ground. Who has ever tried to walk through the sea on dry ground? It's just not going to happen without God. Is that right? But if you can imagine, I love scuba diving. But let me tell you, I know what the sea is like under the, 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 the bottom. is like under all the water. It is beautiful. There's a garden. There's gardens, anemones, beautiful, starfish. The most beautiful things were created under the water, which you cannot see unless you go under. But they walked 
on dry ground with a sea open to them. That's their track record. Verse 2, in the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. Did we ever see that? Did we ever look at that part? That there was a set person God could trust? God anointed him, and he was a humble, gentle man. Trained by the masters of the palace. So he had good grounding of the other side of the world, of darkness. But yet God chose him to walk these murmuring, complaining Israelites, reveal miracles that they probably didn't even see. And all they did was complain until he got them to the promised land. And when they got to the promised land, they didn't want to enter in. Because then they were afraid. They forgot what God had brought them through. Let us never get to the place where we forget what God has brought us through. God has done mighty things in our lives. And God's never going to stop presenting himself as a good God to us, as a holy father who never changes. And in verse 3, it says, all of them ate the same spiritual food. That's a very important point. How come they weren't all Joshes? They ate the same spiritual food. So they all got the same feed because they would gather together and they would be praying and they'd talk about God. So their spiritual food was all the same. But yet in verse 4, and all of them drank the same spiritual water, living water, for they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and that rock was Christ. And I want to say to you today, we all have Christ traveling with us every day of our lives. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am your sure foundation. I'm with you wherever you go. How come we look at ourselves to produce something instead of looking upwardly? How come we allow the enemy to take our eyes off the only thing that can take us through the difficult things and we look at ourselves that are ill-equipped and not ready, and can't do it. So Jesus' promise of the living water is so important in John 7, verse 37. On the last day, listen to this from the New Living Translation, the climax of the festival, it had fully come. Jesus stood and he shouted. So he wasn't quiet about this. He wasn't silent about this instruction to the crowds. Anyone, and that means everyone qualifies, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Isn't that a beautiful open invitation? Anyone that is thirsty, come to me. So that means you don't first have to go and fix yourself. You don't first have to go and get rid of all those holy cows, the things that we nurture on a daily basis, habits, whatever they are. Just come, come to me. And the promise of the Holy Spirit is there. He says, on that last day, the great day of the feast, this is from the New King James Version, Jesus stood and he cried out. The New Living Translation said he shouted out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink, and drink, and drink. Spiritual food, spiritual information. In verse 38, the New Living Translation says, anyone, anyone who believes. So believing is a requirement in me may come and drink. For the scripture declares, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Rivers of living water. But we know now as the church, he already was crucified He already went to the pits of hell, buried for three days, 
rose again after the three days, and he says, rivers of living water you can drink from every day of your life. I will send you the Spirit. Holy Spirit is available. Do you allow the Holy Spirit to feed you and to drink from on a daily basis? We're the only ones that determine the level we drink from on a daily basis because this very promise of the Holy Spirit is there for us on a daily basis. And it's all about thirsting for more of His righteousness and less of ourselves. So the crucifying of self is a very important thing we need to do. We need to look at our motives. We need to look at our heart. And we're the only ones that can inspect it and say, Lord, help me. I want renewal. I want this living water to flow. I want the Holy Spirit's fire. Because on our own, we cannot do it. But with him, he's the one that shows us how to do it on a daily basis. And remember, Christ quenches our spiritual thirst with the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is fully come and we receive it because we believe we can have a different walk with our Father on a daily basis. And today I want you to see a very different aspect of becoming a conduit. And I'm waiting for that to happen more and more in the church. Christ makes us a conduit. Now, let me explain what is a conduit. A conduit is a channel. He makes us rivers of the Holy Spirit to others. Have you allowed the Lord to make you a conduit to His Spirit? Have you allowed Him to put the channels of His Holy Spirit, His flow, the gifts fully at work in you? gift of knowledge, baptism of tongues, interpretations of tongues. Can you see the conduit pipe just flowing with the gifts touching whoever needs? Do you have the working of miracles working through you? Because you're connected in this conduit pipe that's got the Holy Spirit working through you and just filtering through to wherever it needs to go. And remember, the only way it flows is through the rivers of living water inside of us. So if we increase in Him by meditating on His Word and we receive it and believe it, the Holy Spirit interprets it to us and we can then walk with the promise. Book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 5. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 8 says, But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. So you cannot stop witnessing of what you received, telling people about me everywhere where you go. He says, In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So there's no way that you'll stop doing what he says. Listen, what is the Amplified Sao verse 8, the classic edition. But you shall receive this power that we spoke about earlier on. The ability, the efficiency, and the might, the power. When the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends, the very, very bounds of the earth is where it will flow. Isn't that such an amazing instruction? And isn't it a wonderful test ground to go to and say, have I got the Holy Spirit? Am I baptized? Am I meditating on the Word? Is the living Word flowing through me? Is the living water touching people's lives? Am I in the right place? 
in my walk with God? And that's a good question to ask. And I do believe that if you want to know more about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of Holy Spirit, I want to ask that the frontliners make the teachings more available in groups so that we can improve part it in you and you can go and impart it to your neighbors because it is a, a valuable message and it really uh, changes every aspect of your walk with God. Amen. Knowledge is power and it changes everything. Amen to that. So come let us pray in this prayer today. Let us ask the Holy Spirit if we are confident in our knowledge with him. Have we been baptized? Are we sure about that? Do we meditate and desire the things that God wants us to desire and to meditate on? Is his word. Has the rivers of living water, are they flowing through our lives? One word from God changes everything. So someone might be going through a difficult season and you walk up to them and say, the peace of God will sustain you. The Lord's strength is made perfect in your weakness. That is a beautiful one word from God. One scripture changes the condition of their lives. Have faith in God. Trust Him. You're going to get through this. Rivers of living water is flowing, touching people's lives because it's real in our lives. Amen. So, Father, we come as a body today, your body, as believers, people that have laid our lives down at the foot of the cross and asked Jesus to come And be Lord and Savior of our lives. We've asked to be forgiven from all of our weaknesses. To be forgiven from everything that stands in the way of serving God. That means the Lord has had an opportunity to cleanse us. To deliver us. To set us free. And to set our feet in liberty. And Father God, growing in your word is the desire that we have to grow in your righteousness, to grow in your instruction, and to apply and release daily to each and everyone we come in contact with hope, for their hope to be restored for their lives to be turned around out of hopelessness into the marvelous light, for the darkness to be turned down and for the light to come bursting through and restore their lives. That is our heart's cry here this morning. We ask, Lord, that you would confirm it in our hearts this morning. Confirm in our hearts if our lives are right. But we want to pray nevertheless, Lord, forgive us, for we have sinned. We have fallen in weaknesses, many of us. But we ask today that you would release your blood over our lives and cleanse us. We believe Jesus Christ came to save the lost. He came to deliver everyone out of darkness and place their feet on the marvelous light, the sure foundation that cannot be shaken. We call forth those experiences for each and every one of us and the experiences for our loved ones is to live in freedom the freedom of your word, the freedom of Jesus Christ, his lordship, being lord over our lives. And we value the cross. We value the freedom it brought to our lives through all of the sacrifices Jesus personally made. 
that we would no longer be slaves, but we would be walking in sonship, the freedom and daughtership, the freedom of God's love for us. That is our call this morning.